if all you were taught about the psychodynamic approach was basically one slide all about Freud and the summary that it's just an old psychotherapy modality that is absolutely outdated, let me change your mind. Hello, hi, and welcome to my little corner on the internet. If we haven't met yet, my name is Alina. I am a German psychologist and currently a psychodynamic psychotherapist in training. And in this video, I want to invite you into my wonderful world of psychodynamics. I'll show you that it's more than uh, just a treatment for mental illness, and it's way more than just Freud, and that it's not dead and outdated. So let's start with what psychodynamic psychology even is. Psychodynamic psychology is an over 120 year old tradition of thought and contrary to said popular belief, it has changed and grown and adapted actually a lot during the course of the last you know 120 plus years and it didn't end with Freud. There are so many approaches within this broader school. It's really so rich that psychodynamic or psychoanalytic for that matter is really just another umbrella term. But the one thing that stays the same and kind of glues all of those different traditions within the psychodynamic approach together is this fundamental assumption that we all have an unconscious mind. Despite how rational and logical we think we are, there is always something, you know, operating within us outside our conscious awareness that nonetheless influences our emotions, thoughts and actions. Or, I mean, why do you think you have, you know, those weird dreams, creative ideas seemingly out of nowhere or you sabotage yourself? I think we can all intuitively sense that we in fact don't fully know ourselves, that sometimes our hearts and minds, you know, want different things, that we're ambivalent about pretty much everything, and that we sometimes do think and feel things that don't seem to make any sense. Psychodynamic psychology, to me, is the intellectual buffet of knowledge and a way of life that hopes to equip us with what we need to explore and understand more of the unconscious mind. If we take a closer look, you know, at the name psychodynamic, psycho, you know, meaning we're dealing with the human soul, that's more than just the brain, and dynamic, meaning we are dealing with different forces, you know, different needs, fears, ideas within us that move within us, they carry energy and might be in conflict or be repressed and might cause us to therefore have, you know, strange dreams, sabotage ourselves or repeat the same dysfunctional pattern again and again. What you've got to know is that psychodynamic psychology is way more than, you know, just a treatment modality for a mental illness because you might have heard of or been in or practiced psychodynamic or psychoanalytic psychotherapy or psychoanalysis and therefore this part is the one that people know the most um, and by the way when it comes to terminology i use psychodynamic for kind of the entire field and psychoanalytic and psychoanalysis for approaches that are more closer related to Freud, but yeah, that's a whole mess in of itself. Like, don't get me wrong, this treatment modality is very interesting and um, very exciting, and I'm being trained in that right now. Um, but in this video, I want to focus not on the therapy aspect. I want to talk about the two other things psychodynamic psychology is that most people don't know. And I think it's about time more people know. To do so, I'm going to summon the help of Nancy McWilliams, uh, who, who is a genius, and I hope to be 10% as knowledgeable when I'm 60 as she is. And I'm going to use one of her papers, which I'll link below, and of course, um, add a lot of my own input and take to it. To this day, the psychodynamic tradition is one of the most comprehensive sets of theories about human nature. How, how does that not blow your mind? And hardly anyone knows about it, except you after this video. And those theories were intended to you know, not just understand pathology, but also, you know, normal mental functioning, whatever that means, culture, you know, and everything in between. The psychodynamic approach never assumed you know mental well wellness and illness as either or you know on or off uh we're all at least a little neurotic it's a spectrum and therefore all of us can benefit from knowing more about you know the big topics that psychodynamic thought covers such as developmental psychology uh, personality styles 
relationships, emotions, defenses, the role of sexuality, fantasy and dreams. So let me share some of my current favorites with you just to give you a little taste. For example, this Freud who thought that dreams were wish fulfillments. For Jung, different people in our dream actually represent different aspects of ourselves. You know, both very interesting. Whenever people ask me about dream analysis, I can't say that much because I'm not a specialist. But this is something you can use when you start recalling your own dreams. Melanie Klein's work can teach us that experiencing ambivalence is actually a sign of maturation, which comes with sadness and guilt. Meanwhile, the paradise so many of us long for, you know, living in symbiosis with unconditional love with that perfect other is a relic of early, early times in our life where love and hate existed separate from each other when we weren't ambivalent, you might say. And this is not a desirable, stable state to be in because that is not real life and losing contact with reality is not something we want in our life. In the tradition of Karen Hornei, Donald Winnicott and Alice Miller, we can learn how the early dependence of all of us on our primary caregivers can lead to self-alienation. If the perceived needs of our parents make us repress certain feelings, needs and aspects of ourselves, and then very often the sensitive, talented, intelligent children are susceptible to then fall, you know, either into grandiosity or depression while battling emptiness and meaninglessness in their lives because they have abandoned their real selves in pursuit of making others happy. Winnicott's work on the false and real self, you know, there's Hanai's contribution to understanding the idealized self. I made so many videos about her on this channel. And there's also Alice Miller's book, The Drama of the Gifted Child, which has become quite popular. And then there's Eric Burney, you know, he taught us so much how we tend to recruit other people to play out our inner drama on the stage of our lives. And we proceed to play enticing games such as as the alcoholic or psychiatry, never really moving forward, but always recreating the same circumstances that we then blame for not being able to ever move forward. Transactional analysis is super interesting. I definitely plan to dive more deeply into that. So I hope you can see that this field is dense and filled with the most interesting insights and um, yes, a few very weird ones. Um, and unfortunately, still a lot of dogma in some corners and therefore you know, you've got to look at it with a critical eye and weed out what you want to explore for yourself and what not. This is not religion. You can pick and choose. And that's why I like to think of it as an intellectual buffet. You can pick and choose what you like to ingest and what not. But still, you know, I would advocate to not make the mistake of throwing out the baby with the bathwater because this approach contains perennial wisdom about how to deal with ambivalence, the meaning of emotions, navigating relationships to others and ourselves, and cultivating self-knowledge based on honesty and the everlasting search for own truth, which leads us right into the third thing that psychodynamic psychology is. If you are a psychology student interested to become a psychotherapist and you know, you're kind of shopping around for training programs that suits you, um, here's a very important note for you. You have to find an approach whose ethos, set of values, way of kind of viewing human nature and the world aligns with you. And if you haven't guessed it already, a psychodynamic approach is not just a treatment modality, a body of knowledge, but also a set of of values, a way of life, you know, a mindset with which you take on the world, um, or at least reach a little bit of more inner clarity. So if the juicy theories have not already convinced you, um, I guess I have another shot here. There are different values at the heart of the psychodynamic approach, among them being honesty, curiosity, humility, self-knowledge, responsibility and acceptance, balance, being wise rather than smart, and I've picked out three to discuss further. The first value that was essential in Freud's psychoanalysis already, and to this day is still central, is honesty. Psychodynamic psychology in its essence has always been a search for truth. It started with attempting to talk more truthfully about you know, sexuality and culture and has moved more strongly into searching for our own truth in the many stories we tell ourselves about 
the many parts and experiences of our lives. So whether you undertake this in psychodynamic psychotherapy or just as a way um, of exploring more of yourself by yourself, the goal is always to talk as openly, freely and honestly about anything that comes to mind with yourself as possible. I mean, now I don't recommend going all H.A. Jacobs um, and being unapologetically honest to other people. Um, I'll link an article about this experiment below. First and foremost, this is a value to embrace within yourself. Anything else is optional and should probably be moderated. But the question often is, how can you cultivate a space within yourself where thoughts, you know, memories and feelings can come up? Um, you know, acting on them is a totally different story, but how can you allow yourself to look at the aspects of yourself you find shameful, you know, embarrassing, boring, infuriating, saddening? The defenses we all use certainly make life more livable and we should definitely not abolish them. I made an entire YouTube video about that that I'll link in the description. But they are also a form of self-deception. And in our search for truth, we have to find ways to relax those defenses, at least temporarily when it feels safe. Because while they do protect us and are important, they also protect us from uncomfortable truths we really need to face to mourn, uh, grow, change, and eventually become more ourselves, which leads right into the next big value I want to cover. The other thing that comes with defenses, such as um, repressing feelings, needs, and parts of us, is that we alienate ourselves from ourselves. And from a place of alienation, it's incredibly difficult, um, if not impossible, to create a life that feels authentic. Because authentic means being whole. And when parts of our feelings and needs are not allowed to be there, and we bury them underground, we are not whole anymore. There was usually a good reason back in the day that caused this self-alienation. So this is not, you know, just another opportunity to dunk on ourselves, but to understand why part of our true feelings and wishes needed to move underground. And a huge goal of the psychodynamic approach is to help people recover, nurture and develop their real selves through a process of mourning truthful discovery, um, we can sometimes reconnect to lost parts of us and find our way back to authenticity. Through this process, we often have to come to terms with a lot of things we cannot change, which brings us to the next value I want to mention, acceptance. We all have to accept that the perfect life is not possible, that we won't get a better childhood, that we might never be the same, after something terrible happened to us. And in that way, the psychodynamic approach does not combine well with the American spirit. You know, the spirit of everything is possible, dream big, you can be anything you want. Um, I'd say it's definitely less inspirational, but more realistic. Freud actually talked about the goal of psychoanalysis um, in a letter I adore. So here is my translation of it for you. I heard again and again from my patients when I promised them help or relief, the objection, you say yourself that my suffering has to do with my circumstances and fate. You cannot change anything about that. In what way can you help me? To which I was able to answer, I don't doubt that fate would have it easier than me to reduce your suffering, but you will be convinced that a lot is won if we manage to turn your hysteric suffering into ordinary unhappiness. Against the latter, you will be able to defend yourself much better with a recovered soul. This endless pursuit of paradise, of perfection, uh, the state in which we will never feel anything negative ever again, is a defense in itself against the reality of our own suffering. While change, you know, taking responsibility and agency is crucial, and it's also very important in the psychodynamic approach, um, you know, it's, it's not mother or father bashing and blaming as some caricature might have it, but we also have to practice acceptance for the reality that is our life, in which we are or were dependent, neglected ourselves or others, suffered losses, felt envious, guilty, sad, furious. And even if anything is possible, not everything 
is possible. Eventually though, um, this might also lift, you know, this kind of heavy burden off our shoulders of having to have the perfect life, achieving everything and being the perfect person, which is so soul crushing. You know, to me, uh, the ideas of the psychodynamic tradition and the value it embodies have been so soothing, comforting, and clarifying in a way. Because how much pressure does it put on oneself to feel like we need to have it all figured out? We need to be perfect. We need to be productive all the time. We need to be an overachiever. We need to prove everyone wrong. Of course, usually all of those stories we tell ourselves and all of those strivings for superiority, as Adela would say, uh, they have their origin story. But how comforting to even just entertain the option that maybe we don't. I'm actually currently working on a new project to bring together psychodynamic thinking in a very digestible format with the opportunity for question and answers, challenges, book clubs to kind of get all the knowledge I accumulated in the last years that is still growing because I'm still learning myself to make this available for more people. So if you're interested in this kind of psychology, I know that, well, first of all, you would love my newsletter. So I'm going to link that below. Feel free to sign up. And this will also put you on the list to be notified about my newest project, The Psychodynamic Circle. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.